All right, Battletech enthusiasts, we're taking a look at the Warhammer here. And one of the great things about Battletech, given the diversity of the machines here, is that we all have our, our favorite mechs, what we like to play on the tabletop. And what I'm doing right now, literally, as I make this vlog, I am looking at the various mechs in my collection and uh, trying to emotionally step back from these machines and ask myself the following tactical questions. And we're going to look in this vlog at, at the Warhammer. Is there a more iconic mech? I mean, it was on the box cover of the Battletech that got me started in this amazing game here. Uh, that was before the rescene. That was the original Unseen. This idea that every mech, there's something that it does well. We want to exploit this on the tabletop and push this tactical advantage right into the heart of our opponent. Likewise, there's uh, things that mechs don't do so well or weak points or deficiencies. I can't, we're talking stock mechs here, I can't modify them, I can't change them, I can't lessen them because we're all kind of this balance of weight and armor and weapons and components, but I can try to do my best to understand the deficiencies and tactically on the tabletop keep my opponent busy enough to hopefully not exploit it. So every single mech, that's kind of the filter, what we're looking at. And future vlogs, in addition to covering base core battle tech tactics, I'm going to be sharing with you my experience with various mechs that I like to play and, well, various mechs that I don't like to play against. Of course, my opponents listening to this, my battle tech friends, well, you kind of already know that I, I really hate certain mechs you bring to the table. But we're going to share in the interest of exploring this amazing game and keeping it going my thoughts on why I hate what you do to me on the tabletop. So it's been said that, admittedly, my, my Battletech tactics are a little bit, bit one-dimensional. My theory is, big guns never tire. Subset, you can't argue with an auto cannon 20. You can have your fancy tactics. You can have your combined arms. You can have your flanking, outflanking, and your interlocking units and field of fire and all this type of stuff. I get up there. I fire off five or six AC-20 rounds. You got smoking boots. You can't argue with that. So admittedly, a number of my lists are very, very aggressive. Building on that with the Warhammer, first thing, two PPCs, Fritz Likey. I like weapons that deal 10 points or more damage. Again, it, it kind of goes into this combined arms, big guns, never tire philosophy. That's not to say that uh, autocannon twos, look, you give me a, a mech with AC twos, shooting away at long distance, going crit hunting, just, just putting some dice down on the table every turn. It has its place. It, it does. Or you give me some sort of beast type mech, uh, the grasshopper, right? A lot of medium lasers to, to throw out there. That's, that's pretty potent on there. There's no, it's, it's also hard to argue with half a dozen or a dozen medium lasers point-blank range in your face with the heat sinks to deliver that type of optic pain on there. So tactically, yes, with how it, it works, but I like 10 or higher damage-type weapons. So right away, I, I equate the Warhammer as an aggressive mech, something we want to go out and, and utilize those two PPCs a turn. But can we really do that? A lot of the unseen, reseen, old scene type mechs, the heat sinks, they're, they're like, look at the Marauder, right? Good speed, decent armor, good weapons. But then you're like, wait, heat sinks compared to some of the other later mechs. So at best, I'm going to now uh, drawing a little bit from my awesome playbook, not because I'm awesome. I mean, literally the awesome mech. I'm going to be firing one PPC a turn. When you get close enough before you close to the range bracket to the next set of weapons, the lasers and the short-range missiles, I might pop off two. At that point, I plan to not be moving. So this way, at least I'm not building heat from the walking or the running on there. So I find that the, the Warhammer, it's not a run-and-gun type mech. It's the type of mech because I need to keep track of heat. I want to get into a good position on the tabletop. And of course, this is, this is the chess match, right? This is the synergy. My opponent's going to try and stop this. I want to get into a place where I've got a good field of fire. I got some place to pull back from when um, you know things go pear-shaped on there. And I would preferably like some cover because I'm not going to get the movement modifiers from walking or running. They're not going to work against me in shooting, but they're not going to have the, the uh, hexes 
when you shoot back at me with the dice there to modify it. So if I can get into light cover, if I can get into heavy cover, if I can get into leg blocking cover or something like that, that's, that is key. That's what I'm aiming to do. So for that moment before we close to medium range, I can cook off two PPCs. Now when we get to medium range, there's this tendency to want to fire all the stuff. So I find actually the heat management's deceptive because it's going to stack up faster. And then finally we close to the short range with the machine guns and everything else on there. So tactically, you've got a lot of weapons. You've got a lot of weapons. You don't have the heat to fire it or, you know, maybe you've got a coolant truck hosing you down or you're just in water or you have some way to negate heat. The challenge I find with the Warmaster, excuse me, the Warhammer, thinking 40K here, Horus, Hail Horus, right? The, the big challenge I see with the Warhammer is this fact that you have all these weapons to want to shoot. So you want to get up there in, in opposing mech's faces, but you don't have the armor. You do not have the armor to be able to, to deal with it in that way, to go blow to blow. Now, I find this also challenging in that it's a fine line. Obviously, uh, a high-end, high-tonnage heavy mech versus the low-tonnage assault mech. Yeah, you've now crossed over that fine line, but, but it could be close. It's deceptive with the Warhammer to see your armor, which isn't as good as it should be because you have a lot of your internals just with weapons and a lot of your tonnage devoted to weapons. You really can't go toe-to-toe with an assault mech. You don't have the armor. You don't have the heat output. And to go toe-to-toe with an assault mech, I find you're going to be forced to now shoot two PPCs. You're going to be forced to be aggressive with the lasers and the S, the short-range missile pack. The heat is just going to go through the roof on there. And now you're powered down and you're in trouble. So where I see the Warhammer, and maybe this is kind of against the design of it, it's a second-tier mech. This is the type of mech in your list where... Um, maybe your awesome goes in. Maybe your atlas goes in. Your maybe your your heavier mechs like the banshee and stuff. They're the ones that make contact first. They cause a lot of damage. They start to punch through your opponent's armor. At that point, something is going to weaken. You know, BattleTech. A lot of BattleTech is whoever blinks first. Whoever, based on the initiative structure, assuming you're not doing stuff like um, taking infantry stands to to dump an initiative move in and stuff like that. If we're going mech to mech, as soon as you lose a mech and you're down on the initiative chart, that things get really, really hard. So at some point, your mech starts taking damage, and it's this constant gamble of, well, how much more damage can I take? Can I take an ammo hit? Am I going to get an ammo hit? What's my engine damage? Am I going to get a leg blown off? Where's it going to go? At some point, hopefully before all that happens, you're going to start to pull back. And I'm not talking about tactically tactical withdrawal rules. You're going to start to pull back. That's where the Warhammer pounces. The Warhammer now, um, kind of with the pack, is now going to break off and leverage its two PPCs, 10 points each. Leverage the fact that it can get close and do like a little mini alpha strike on there. The fact that that mech is already weakened versus your armor means now the deficiency of having less armor excels. I find as an almost hunter-killer type role, this is where the Warhammer really, really excels. And it's a paradox because on the surface, it's got the weapons, it's got the weight. You want to get up there. You want to be in, in a mech warrior's face. I don't know how well it plays from that angle, from that capacity. Your thoughts, your feedback, your comments on the blog here. How do you utilize the Warhammer? I'm very interested in hearing it because this is one of my top 10 machines my top 10 mechs that I love, I love, I love, I love to play. 